Hello, AP Stats. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, today we're going to talk about discrete and continuous random variables. This is the second day. Um, so we've already talked about how to find the mean of discrete random variables and basically what a random variable is. Um, so today we're going to do um, standard deviation and variance for discrete random variables um, and then talk about what that means in context because you know stats is all about context and if you don't conclude in context you can't get full credit okay also and it's useless information because context is everything in stats um, this the calculator stuff I think we're gonna actually cut out because it's it's actually more confusing believe it or not, in this case, to use the calculator. So I don't think we're going to do the calculator today. If we have time at the end, I might show you, but I, I think it'll just be better if we don't. Um, and then last, we'll look at um, continuous random variables. Continuous. Okay, so number one, discrete random variables. Okay, suppose you have a discrete random variable. We're going to call it x. Um, and it has a mean, mu sub x. And it has a probability distribution where, you know, your x1, x2, x3, dot, dot, dot. Those are all your uh, possible outcomes for the discrete random variable. And then p1, p2, p3 are all the... Um, uh, corresponding probabilities of each event, each outcome occurring. Okay, so the variance of x, remember variance and standard deviation measure the distance from the mean. So if we already know the mean, then we can find the standard deviation and the variance. So the variance is the following. Okay. Variance, remember, we can write as sigma squared because standard deviation is just sigma and then we square it to get our variance. Um, so your, your variance is um, each individual x value, so x1 minus the mean, square it, and then multiply that by the probability of the first outcome occurring, okay? Then we do that again for x2, and the same thing for p3, and until you have covered the entire, um, the entire distribution, okay? Um, so I'll uh, write the rest of the formula in there. So there's that funny sigma sign again. That just means the sum of add up all of the values x sub i, where x sub i is all, are all the individual x values, and p sub i are the corresponding probabilities. Okay. Um, and then standard deviation is the same as it's always been. It's just the square root of the variance. And in context, right, um, a standard deviation, uh, if we're talking standard deviation, um, say we're talking about GPAs, uh, you might say something like, on average, a randomly selected person's GPA will differ from the mean by about 0.5 points or whatever the standard deviation is. Um, okay, so for a continuous random variable, um, we can really only talk about the, uh, the probability of a range of values, right? Um, if it's discrete, you can say, okay, what's the probability of rolling a 6, right? Because your options are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But if you have a continuous variable, which, you know, the values are infinite, you can't say, like, what's the probability of selecting somebody whose height is 64 inches, right? Because in that case, your denominator is infinite. It'd be like one out of infinity, which is undefined and, you know, approximately approaches zero. So, anyways, you can only talk about range of values. Um, often we'll be looking at normal distributions or you'll be given what the shape of the distribution looks like so you can find that value. It's just going to be the area because it'll turn out to be a problem from like a, a, a distribution um, a density curve kind of thing, right? Area under it is one. Anyways, we'll look at an example. No worries. Okay, so let's look at our first example. Okay. So previously, we did an example um, where we calculated the mean number of goals for a randomly selected team in a randomly selected NHL game to be 2.851. Okay. 
Um, and so I've also included the probability distribution for, um, for x. Um, and then it says compute and interpret the standard deviation for the random variable x. Okay, so you're just going to use the formula from above. Um, and since I already have found the mean, which in case you need a refresher, remember the mean you calculate as the outcome times the probability plus the outcome times the probability plus the outcome times the probability and then add them all up. Okay, um, so in this case we already have the mean which is 2.851 and so our standard deviation um, let's actually start with uh, the variance because that's a little easier to deal with so we don't have to look at square roots yet. We can just take the square root at the end. Um, so it's, remember from up here, it's your x value minus your mean squared. So my x value is 0 minus my mean is 2.851 squared and then times the probability of that event occurring. So that's 0 0.061. And then we add that to the next one, okay, which is my uh, number next, getting one goal. So we get 1 minus 2.851 square it times the probability of that happening, 0 0.154 plus dot dot dot. And then, you know, we do this for every single term. Um, last one is 9 minus the mean, 2.851 squared times the probability of it happening, 0 0.001. And then we just um, go through and calculate that. I will leave that up to you to calculate. Good luck. Have fun. It'll take a little while. That's okay. So, uh, when you calculate all of that, add them all up, um, you get 2.6569. Okay? Um, and then it asks for you to compute the standard deviation and interpret it. So, um, to get the standard deviation, we just do uh, sigma is the square root of the variance, which is the square root of 2.6569 which is okay, 1.63 approximately. Um, and then it says to interpret in context of the problem. Remember, we're talking about goals in an NHL game. Um, so you might say something like, on average, a randomly selected team's number of goals in a randomly selected game will dif differ from the mean by about 1.63 goals. And there you have it. Okay. Um, so now we're going to move on to con to like compare discrete versus continuous um, distributions. And okay, so I have two examples here, and also dinosaur later, um, <laughs> of uh, discrete versus continuous, but similar situations, right? Um, a discrete chance thing. <laughs> outcome <laughs> might be like, hey, or um, event is the word that I wanted, um, is uh, choose a random digit between 0 and 9, okay? Random digit means my options are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, not, not 8.5 or 0 0.001, right? Discrete means I have a like cut and like uh, you know cut and dry options like black and white and then a continuous um, random variable might be something like hey let's choose a random number between 0 and 9 well I could give you an infinite number of possibilities there are lots and lots and lots of numbers between 0 and 9 right um, 0 0.00001, square root of 2, square root of 3, 5.5, 2 thirds, right? There, I mean, infinite possibilities, right? So anyways, um, discrete versus continuous, okay? So um, my sample space for the discrete one is going to be 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but for the other one it would be any number between 0 and 9. Okay, so the probability distribution for the discrete random variable would look something like this, right, where your options are 0, 1, 2, 3, you kind of get the idea, right, and you put um, on the y-axis, you put, you know, the probability of that event occurring. So um, the probability of getting a zero out of these options is um, one out of ten. Similarly, the probability of getting a one from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is one out of ten. And same for two, same for three, all the way up to nine. And notice, right, if I make all those boxes, the area underneath should be the total probability of my entire sample space um, and all of my options, right, which should be one. And it is, right? My width is 10, my height is 1 tenth, 10 times 1 tenth is one. Yay! Okay, so when we go to the discrete case, right, our um, probability distribution looks kind of similar, right, but we don't have this discrete chunking from from 0, 1, 2, 3, right? Um, so really all we can talk about is finding the probability of getting a number between 1 and 2 um, because otherwise it doesn't really make sense, right? What's the probability of picking the number 2.7593? Well, it's kind of like 1 out of infinity, which is 0 essentially, right? And so it doesn't really make sense. So it makes a lot more sense to say, oh, it's the probability of the number being between 3 and 4, or 7 and 10, or whatever. Um, <laughs> 7 and 10. 10 is not an option. Anyways, right? But that brings us back to density curves, right? Because it should be positive. Remember, density curves, area is 1. Um, and the area of the region that you want corresponds to the probability of that region happening, right? So this actually is very much related to what we've done in the past with normal distributions and density curves. Yay! So that's cool. So just so you can visually see this, right? Here's your probability distribution for the continuous um, variable. But, um, so if I'm looking, right, the area of the whole thing is 1. Um, and if I want to know what's the probability of getting a number between 7 and 9, I could find the area between 7 and 9. So here's 7, 8, 9, and I want to know the probability of being in this region, right? And the area corresponds to the probability, right? Because um, the whole thing has to add up to 1. So uh, your probability would be 2 out of 10, which is 1 fifth, um, right? Width times height. 2 times 10, 2 times 1 over 10, which is 1 fifth. All right, let's try an example. Um, I recommend you try the example first and then go through my solution. Good luck. You can pause it now and then I'll show you the answer in a second. Go. All right, so we've got uh, two Rex tooth lengths, follow normal distribution with a mean of 7 inches, standard deviation of about 2.3 inches. Suppose you're on... Um, on a T-Rex dinosaur ex excavation, and you found a random T-Rex tooth. <laughs> Call its length x. So that's our random variable. If we repeat the random discovery many, many times, um, the distribution of values of x is the same as the normal distribution of teeth. Right. So um, find the probability that discovered tooth is between 10 and 13 inches long. Um, this is a simple normal curve. Um, probability problem. Um, so if it helps, you know, you can draw your normal curve with the mean and, and standard deviation, and then I recommend um, shading the area that you want. So you want to find the area corresponding to that, and that'll get you your probability. Um, so find the z-scores of 10 and 13, and then you can use your table or your normal CDF on your calculator to find the probability and find the area. Well, you use your table or your um, normal CDF, and you should get that the probability um, of the tooth being between 10 and 13 inches is about um, 0 0.09. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. Okay.
Bye.